Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on my very favorite handwriting app, Notability, and I'm gonna show you how I take notes in class and from textbooks using the Notability app on the iPad. So there are many people who open up their laptops during class and type out their notes. There are some really nice things about this. You can store your notes with all of your other class documents and they are all searchable. So the problem for me is that I don't retain information quite as well when I type it. The kinesthetic act of writing actually helps me to commit information to memory. Add to that the ability with handwritten notes to color code, pull in photos, draw sketches and create relationships and it is hands down better for me than typewritten notes. So I tried a bunch of different note apps. Notability continues to be my favorite for a couple of reasons. For one thing, it allows me to pull photos into my note and draw on top of them. For whatever reason, that is crucial to me. So here's one way I might use this. If I need to give my mom directions to my son's tennis practice, I'll screenshot the map and then I'll mark it up to show home, the route, and some important landmarks that might help her. Sure, I could do all of this on Google Maps and then make some text notes underneath, but this is just much more intuitive for her. I also use this feature to take a picture of my son's math homework and write on top of it when I'm helping him with his algebra. Plus, I can take pictures of PowerPoint slides during class and then draw on and engage with that material in real time. So the other thing that I like about Notability is that you have lots of options for backing up your notes and sharing with other devices. So some note-taking apps are like a little lonely island, but Notability does a pretty good job of allowing you to see your notes in other places than just on your iPad. I have my notes backed up to Google Drive where it saves them as PDFs, and I have iCloud turned on so that I can see and manipulate those same notes on my phone with the Notability app for iPhone. For example, here's a note that I created on my iPad. And then here it is, courtesy of iCloud, on my iPhone. There are lots of ways to export notes, but we'll talk about that a little later on. Okay, so these are just some of the things that differentiate Notability from the other apps that I've tried. But crucially, it also does the basics of note-taking and drawing really well. So let me show you. First of all, organization. Notability has two levels of organization. It refers to them as dividers, that's the top level, and subjects, that's the second level. So I have a bunch of dividers, including one for home, grad school, work, and writing. And then under those dividers, you can add categories or subjects. So I have really straightforward categories under grad school, one subject for each class that I'm taking. But under home, I have subjects for forms, packing lists, and then I have a random category. So you can split this up however you need to have your notes organized. Notability has not yet adopted virtual organization or tagging. They're still operating with physical organization. And because I don't keep a ton of notes in Notability, that is actually fine by me. So let's start a note in one of my grad school classes so I can show you how I take class notes. Title. Okay, go ahead and title this whatever you want. Notability date stamps each node, so you don't have to include the date in the title unless you need that redundancy, or you're gonna need the date in the title when you export the note later on. Sort. Notability gives you three different ways to sort your notes. You can do it by name, by the date that you created the note, or by the date that you last modified the note. I usually use last modified. Page. By default, I like the white paper with no lines, but when I'm taking classroom notes, I prefer writing on line paper, otherwise I tend to write on a slant. So to change this, you tap on the wrench in the upper right hand corner and choose paper. So there are four different width uh, choices for line paper, several for graphing paper, and a bunch of other colored paper options. You can see what the paper looks like with your note even before leaving this area. I usually use this lined option. Now on to writing tools. So if you choose the text tool, Notability will allow you to enter text using a text box or by just typing anywhere on the note. You can use a colored pen with two different screens of colors. There's no ability to create your own colors, but I've never really minded that. And the ability to change the thickness of the pen from super skinny to fat. You can zoom in to do more precise work or you can use this handwriting panel to write longhand and easily advance to the next section um, segment of the paper typewriter style. So you can choose to use the highlighter tool. It has the same series of colors and the same thicknesses, but this time it is transparent. And this is one of my favorite tools. The scissors tool allows you to cut and paste handwritten elements. For example, uh, say I wanted to move this. I cut it using the scissors tool and then I paste it over here. So you can also do this between notes, but it will just copy it as an image. And here's another thing that I learned recently that I love. You can use the scissors tool to change the color of the pen 
or highlighter of already written notes. So you select the portion of the handwriting that you want to change, and then you hit style, and then change the color or the pen width. I love this since it helps me to be consistent when color coding my notes without having to rewrite things. So this tool that's shaped like a finger allows you to move the screen up and down. I have an Apple Pencil that's Bluetooth connected, but if you do your writing with a non-Bluetooth stylus or with your finger, you either need to use multiple fingers in order to scroll up and down, or you can use this tool. Okay, so those are the writing tools. Um, Notability also gives you the ability to insert things into your note. So like a photo that you have saved or a new photo. So we already talked about that. It's great that you can draw right on top of photos, particularly during class presentations. You can insert a GIF or a web clip, clip. You can record audio from the class and it remembers what you are writing during the audio so that you can replay the entire thing later. So watch this. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So that's cool, right? So I've actually used this for interviews where I can't write fast enough to catch quotes verbatim, but I haven't used this in the classroom that yet. That said, I can see why you would if you were a big audio learner. You can create a diagram here with this figure tool. If you choose figure, you can create shapes and lines connecting them and then even label them with text. So this inserts like a diagram into your note, which means you can't manipulate the elements without opening the figure, but you can draw on top of it. And finally, you can add sticky notes. I really like this tool. Go ahead and add a sticky note and then you can either choose the type here or you can change the paper of the sticky note once it has been inserted. And then when you write on the note, the writing always just remains with the note regardless of where you pull it or move it to. So I like the way that stickies make ideas or reminders pop out just like real life sticky notes. So it's easy and intuitive to rearrange note order and delete and add pages with this panel. You can also tag pages with bookmarks and then show all of the bookmark pages here. This is particularly good for long PDFs that you import, although I personally prefer the Goodreader app for long PDF files. And finally, there are lots of ways to export your notes. Let me just walk you through emailing your note. You hit the share button up here and then email. For format, you can choose PDF, which is like a printout of your notes. RTF, which, which keeps the text and the recording, but nothing else, or the native format, which you can uh, use to be opened in another um, Notability app. I must always choose PDF. Then you can select pages to export, and you can choose which things you want to appear in your exported file, the paper, the recordings, the page margins. You can hit view to see a preview of your export, and you can also print here, plus send your file to a bunch of different services if you are connected to them in the settings. So in addition, if you hit other apps and you share the note, then you get a ton of other options, including save to file, which I use to attach notes to ongoing email conversations. So suffice it to say, there are lots of ways to export your notes to lots of different places, which is actually good, since I don't tend to store my notes in Notability unless I'm actively using them. So once I'm finished making changes, I usually export them to Google Drive for safekeeping. For example, once the new semester started, I exported all of my notes from the classes from last semester to Google Drive for storage and deleted them out of Notability to start fresh for the semester. So let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.